So, let us before we go to the next example let us let us revisit once more the um, uh, the example that we just saw with uh, where the agents had imperfect, but identical measurements. So, in this case uh, uh, notice that when the agents have imperfect, but identical measurements then effectively what we are doing is um, what is happening here is that when the whatever be the measurement see whether it is omega 1 or omega 2 the agents were both agents were were playing the same action. So, this this agent was so the uh, the action of agent 2 in uh, in this particular policy was to choose uh, was to choose R in this case and action of agent 1 was to choose U. So, what what appeared in the cost therefore, was u comma r in this case and similarly u comma r in this particular case right. Now, however, of course, the cost itself changes because uh, because you have uh, uh, because it the cost also depends on the value of, of psi. So, when it is omega 1 here you have 0 whereas, when it is omega 2 here you have 3 right. So, the cost itself uh, changes, but nonetheless uh, there is there is something to be exploited here because both agents have the same information we can actually uh, try and make uh, you know uh, make a sort of smart use of that particular uh, that particular uh, piece of uh, piece of information that we have about the problem. So, let, uh, in order to do that let us look at this expression once again the expression that we have for j. So, remember j of gamma 1 comma gamma 2 is the expectation of L of gamma 1 of y 1 comma gamma 2 of y 2 comma comma psi. But now because both agents have the same information what we what we can what we realize is that y 1 is equal to y 2 these two are actually equal they both because both that this is because both agents get the same information. So, therefore, we what we can do is the following we can write this as expectation of L of a new function gamma tilde of of y where y is this common information of both agents. So, y here is equal to y 1 equal to y 2 and gamma tilde gamma tilde is simply a function which takes a pair of uh, v, instead of taking um, uh, instead of taking one action it actually takes a pair of actions. So, the pair of actions that it takes is uh, gamma tilde 1 comma gamma tilde 2 and its pair of actions is is drawn from this set it is drawn from the set u comma d cross Cartesian product with L comma R. So, it can take one of so this this Cartesian product basically talks of this uh, it is all the pairs that are possible here. So, it is it is u comma uh, it, it comprises of u the pair u comma L it comprises uh, u comma R d comma L d comma R is this is uh, this is where this is the uh, the uh, the these are the pairs of uh, of uh, that these are the pairs that that uh, uh, that omega tilde that gamma tilde can take its values in. So, thanks to this effectively what we have done is we have now written out this this new problem now just looks like a problem with one agent one agent having having an information y equal to y and whose actions are taken in this in this set of pair. Now, why is this equivalent to the earlier one? Well, it is easy to see because now when I all I need to do is when I in order for me to specify a, uh, a policy now what I have to do is write the values of gamma tilde gamma tilde for each value of each value of y and y being equal to y 1 equal to y 2 as can take two possible values. So, so you have y equal to omega 1 stroke omega 2 or y equal to omega 3 and in in each of these cases you have some value you have a value you have a possible value for gamma tilde. 
So, gamma tilde itself can take values from this set of four possible four different values you know each value being a pair of uh, pair uh, of actions here right. So, for example, one one strategy is as an example one strategy could be that this is equal to uh, equal to the strategy where you take say omega in in the case of omega when when the this thing is omega uh, when the information is omega 1 or omega 2 you play the strategy d you play the the paired action d comma r and when it's omega when it's omega 3 you play the paired action d comma l So, what is this particular strategy? Well, once you substitute this, you realize that you can see what this is. This is actually the expectation of this becomes the expectation of d comma r. Uh, sorry, this this the 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 cost of this policy becomes L of d comma r times comma psi. But psi itself, remember, is can take two different values: omega one or omega two. So it's omega one times probability of omega 1 plus L of d comma r comma omega 2 times probability of omega 2 plus L of d comma L comma omega 3 times probability of omega 3. Now, what, uh, what is this expression? Well, this expression is nothing but the event is nothing but j of what we had uh, earlier written out as the pol as the cost of the policy where the first agent where agent 1 is do is playing d d and the second agent is playing r l. So, as you can see what what we have done is by combining these two agents into one agent this and who plays is the strategy gamma tilde the combined agent plays a strategy gamma tilde we we basically reduce this problem to a single agent problem. So, and this is j of d d comma r l in fact, if you recall was in fact r uh, the the optimal policy that we had it was equal to uh, 0 points which was whose value was equal to 0 0.6 right. So, so why have we been able to do this com combination the reason we have been able to sort coalesce gamma 1 and gamma 2 into a uh, into into uh, into one uh, into one function which can take whose values are simply a pair of values uh, is uh, the reason we have been able to do that is because we have we have this here which is we have y y one equal to y two and that is uh, what we are denoting by y. So because we have been because y one is equal to y two there is it is essentially there are really no instead of two different functions it is actually equivalent to having one function, but taking a vector of values or a pair of values and that is that is that is the only uh, little simplification that has been done here and that then effectively makes it a single agent problem. So, the lesson in short is that once agents have identical information the there is really no nothing multi agent about this problem the the, the two agents can be uh, thought of as one one agent just taking while uh, who's who just takes actions in a different space right so all the complexities in team problems therefore arise when agents have non identical measurements agents having uh, imperfect or perfect measurements but having identical measurements reduces the problem to a single agent problem right it you can also see that this this problem can uh, it reduces in in some ways to uh, to a uh, to also a problem of perfect information see one can one can do the uh, one looking at this this cost expression here what one can do is one can come take take this com this particular combined cost as uh, as the cost of um, uh, the, as the cost of a new event which is omega 1 stroke omega 2 right. So, we can we what we can do is we can we can come uh, we can write out the following. So, we can think of a new event. So, we can think of omega as comprising of not 3, but 2 events. The first event is omega 1 stroke omega 2. The third is 
the second event is omega 3 itself. And now what is the probability of omega 1 stroke omega 2? This, this is probably is what was the erstwhile probability of omega 1 or omega 2. So, this is equal to point, point 0.6 and the probability of omega 3 remains the same it is equal to point 0.4. Now what happens to what is then the cost in this event? In the cost in this event, so if you have any pair of actions A comma B and if you if you wanted to define the cost for this, well this cost can be thought of in the following way. This, is, this cost can be thought of as the cost of taking action A comma B in omega 1 plus the take, uh, times the probability of omega 1 plus the cost of taking action a comma b in omega 2 times the probability of omega 2 divided by the total probability of omega 1 and omega 2. So, effectively what you are doing is taking a weighted average of the of the cost corresponding to omega 1 and omega 2. So, now with we can now once we can basically just think of the problem as if it is on it is on this new space here the new space let us denote it by omega tilde it is as if it is on this new space omega tilde and where the new event here omega 1 omega omega 1 stroke omega 2 occurs with probability equal to 0.6. And you can see that uh, you can check for yourself that these equation this will all come down to the uh, to the same earlier earlier expression. So, what is happening is a problem with imperfect measurements, but with identical measurements for both agents is not only equivalent to a problem with one agent having that, uh, that information, but in fact equivalent to that one agent having perfect information itself. Because we can you know remodel the cost and remodel the space of events in such a way that uh, the that the information is effectively uh, uh, you know perfect on that remodeled space. So, this is this is uh, this is a little bit of a digression, but it, it helps you think of what really is the is the complexity when we when we have uh, when we have team problems like this. So, team problems the in team problems the complexity all arises from the diversity or asymmetry of information uh, with the agents. If, if multiple agents have the same uh, uh, information then there is not much um, uh, you know uh, there is not much interesting that is going on because in the in many ways it is really a single agent problem then. Okay. So, so uh, with this lesson let us take another example uh, which is also kind of extreme example, but uh, let us do it for completeness sake which is uh, suppose both agents get uh, uh, none of the agents get any measurements whatsoever. Okay. So, this in this case, so we are assuming the case of no measurements. So, here is another example suppose you have no measurements. So, this is a special case of identical measurements, uh, uh, but a rather extreme special case because we are assuming uh, no uh, there is no information with the agents. Now, if agents do not have any information whatsoever, then then their action is, is the same regardless of the value of the of, of psi. So, the value of psi does not affect uh, the their information, the, the, the information they get is a constant independent of the value of psi. So, as a consequence of that their actions are also a constant. So, agents therefore, have to pick only here not a policy, but just a pe an action one for each agent because the, uh, there is n uh, there is nothing that they have to decide as a function of their information. So, there are as a result two, two there are only two policies and two trivial policies for the uh, for both agents. The agent one can choose uh, the policy to always play up or always play down and agent two can choose the policy to always play left or always play right. So, the Therefore, the, uh, the, the cost matrix then becomes something like this. I it is easy to write it out, we will just quickly write this out. So, you have agent 2 here, agent 1 here, agent 2 can take action either left or right, agent 1 can take up or down. 
and you can evaluate what the uh, uh, what the cost would be by using the same logic as above. It turns out that if it is U L it is 1.3, if it is U R it is 1.7, if it is D L it is 1.5 and if it is D R it is 1.4. And then in that case it is easy to see that the optimal the optimal cost is, is 1.3 and the optimal policy is to for agent 1 to always play U and agent 2 to always play L regardless of uh, any anything else. So, they do not get any information this is all they have to do right. So, this this here is is another example. Uh, so, let us call this example 3. Now, now let us look at another uh, uh, another more uh, involved example uh, in this example now we have non identical measurements for both agents. So, this is the example with non identical ok. So, in this case uh, what we will assume first uh, because we are building up things slowly we will first we will assume first that the uh, the case where the first agent gets no information ok. So, y 1 is empty um, regardless of the value of omega uh, regardless of the value of psi ok. So, y 1 is empty ok. So, the first agent gets no information, but this, uh, the second agent here uh, can gets gets to see the exact value of psi. So, uh, you can say y 2 is uh, is uh, belongs to so y2 here belongs to either omega 1 or omega 2 or omega 3 so he gets to see the exact value of 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 this uh, of uh, the exact value of psi so in a, in other words i1 Okay, you can say is equal to sigma of this one set he gets omega 1 omega 2 omega 3. So, this is essentially is saying that regardless of what happens uh, of the value of psi whether it is omega 1 or omega 2 or omega 3 agent 1 has no way of distinguishing or agent 1 can own just cannot uh, tell whether it is omega 1 that has occurred or omega 2 or omega 3. So, for him they are all uh, they are all identical that is equivalent to him getting no information. The uh, the and agent 2 on the other hand is his information is sigma of these individual sets. So, he can tell if omega 1 occurs, omega 2 occurs or omega 3 occurs separately this is what agent uh, agent 2 can distinguish. Now, how many policies are there for each agent? So, now let us uh, let us do this calculation a little more uh, closely. The policy agent 1 because he has no information can can his policies are trivial he can he, he just has to choose an action because there is nothing uh, nothing to base the action on. So, he can choose he and he has 2 different actions. So, he has 2 different policies and these policies let us denote them as u and D right. So, he has 2 policies U and D ok. Now, agent 2 on the other hand his he has uh, a, a much more finer amount of information and he can make use of this information to decide his action. So, agent 2 can now choose a uh, he has to choose an action for every possible uh, piece of information that he gets. His information can take 3 different values it is omega 1 or omega 2 or omega 3 and, and he can take uh, his action can take 2 different values which is L and R. So, the number of policies for this for agent 2 then becomes 2 raised to 3 that is because for every piece of information which is uh, which is omega 1 or omega 2 or omega 3 he has 2 possible actions. Right. So, he can take action L or R in, in omega 1, L or R in omega 2, L or R in omega 3. 
So, this give, gives rise to three uh, th uh, two choices for each value of psi and therefore, uh, 2 raised to 3 or equivalent or essentially 8 different policies. So, so he agent 2 has agent 2 has 8 possible policies. So, now uh, what do we uh, uh, how do we list these policies out? Well, it, it, we can list them out in a very simple way. When I, I can say, well, uh, the if I want to write out here a policy in which, uh, let's say, gamma gamma two of y two takes well equal to a b c if y two equals omega one, y two equals omega two, and y two equals omega three. So, a policy this is a description of a policy, but we can write this more briefly as something like this A, B, C. Uh, so, this is a policy. So, for instance, if I uh, for example, you could have a policy saying say L, L, R. Now, L, L, R here would be uh, this here is a policy in which if, if omega 1 here is the information, then the agent plays L agent 2 plays L, if omega 2 is the information then also he plays L and if omega 3 is the information then he plays R. Right? So, you can see here there is going to be there are going to be 8 different uh, combinations like this. So, once again we can now write out uh, J of omega 1 comma omega 2 for every uh, J of sorry gamma 1 comma gamma 2 for every value of gamma 1 gamma 2. So, this is going to be an even bigger table. So, let me make some space here to write this out. So, this for agent 2 the choices are as I said quite simple. Agent 2 has to choose either up or down. Agent 1 sorry agent 1 the choices are simple he has to choose either up or down. And for agent 2, he has those 8 different policies. So, he let me write out these policies. First policy is L, L, L. This is effectively the policy where uh, agent, agent 2 is always playing L regardless of what information he has. Another policy is L, L, R. A third policy is L, R, L. Another policy is L R R. Another policy is R L L. Then L R uh, sorry R L R. Then R R L. And finally, last policy is R R R. Okay, so I actually don't need such a big table. I can make this shorter like this. So now what we can do is, as we have done before we will uh, fill out the values uh, of j for each pair of policies each uh, for each policy like this so i'll i'll fill this out we can compute them exactly in the same way as we did before so let's fill this out it turns out here it's 1.3 here 1 1.7 1.6 2 1.0 1.4 1.3 1.7, 1.5, 2.3, 1.2, 2.2, 0 0.9, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 and 1.4. All right. So, this, uh, this is the uh, table of values that, that we find.
Now uh, it's it's quite easy to see here that once again the lowest possible value we can get is is 0 0.6, and the uh, and that value comes from agent uh, agent one playing uh, playing D always. So agent one here is always playing D. This is agent one. This is agent two. Remember. So agent one play, plays D. Uh, since he gets no information, he is always playing D, and agent two plays. R R L. That means if it's omega one or omega two, he plays R, and it's, if it's omega uh, three, he plays L. Now uh, you can see, although agent uh, one here, uh, agent two here has the information of the value of psi. You can see he is only partially using it. He is only using it um, uh, to distinguish between omega three and not omega three. Uh, he is not actually dis his policy is the same regardless of whether the value of omega psi is omega 1 or omega 2 right because it is r r l here. So, as a, as, a, as a result this policy is actually effectively the same as this policy that we had here the, the policy that we had in the previous lecture it is actually the same as this particular policy because this is where he was choosing r when it is omega 1 or omega 2. And similarly for agent 1 as well, agent 1 there was playing the const was always playing D regardless of uh, the information. In this case, uh, in this example the agent actually uh, agent 2 actually does not have the information. So, he is uh, uh, he, he so he is obligated to play uh, the same regardless uh, regardless of the value of psi. So, as and we and, and you can see as a result we get in fact also the same cost that we that we got earlier we got we are getting the cost of 0.6 for this pair of policies and that is actually the same as the cost that we that we got out here. Now, you can check that uh, uh, there, there is a the, that, the, that, uh, that this, this will hold not just for this particular policy, but for other policies as well. So, for example, if you look at this cost here, this cost is for the policy where agent 1 is always playing D and agent 2 is always playing L. So, in our new problem where the agent, agent 1 has no information, it corresponds to D and agent 2 always playing L a corresponds to agent 2 having the information, but disregarding it. So, he is playing the policy L L L and you can see the corresponding cost there is then 1.5. You can check the same for every other uh, every other sort of interesting pair that you can find here. Okay. So, this is uh, this is therefore, another example uh, uh, of, of, a, of a team problem. Now, this kind of a problem uh, uh, has been simplified significantly because both agents, um, although both agents have uh, non-identical measurements, agent 1 actually has trivial information. He just basically has no information. So, he is only taking an action and thanks to that our search became rather easy. Okay. But if, if, um, if the uh, problem were more complex, our search would also become more complex and uh, we would have to write out a much larger table in that case. Okay. So, the, this is uh, so, uh, so, so this is something that uh, we will see more of in the next lecture.